Welcome to The Bo Show. You all know that my name is Bo, which is a French word. However, I'm not French at all. I'm mostly Scottish and UK. However, being from the southern United States, especially towards Louisiana, the name is a little more common. Bo Brummel was a famous stylish dandy, and Bo Bridges is an actor. And for the first time in my life, I got the chance to take a trip to France to see what French culture really was like. COVID restrictions have thankfully loosened to the point where things almost seem normal. The purpose of my trip was to attend the wedding of a couple that I met in Florida. The bride is French and the groom is American, and they asked me to sing something for their wedding. So stick around for the end of this episode where you will see me perform that very song. France and Paris in particular have always seemed to me to have an air of romance around it. When I arrived in Paris, as jet lagged as I was, I hit the ground running straight to a cruise on the River Seine. This is a great way to see a lot of Paris's attractions without having to walk. You start just below the Eiffel Tower and you cruise along to see the ornate golden bridges and of course Notre Dame Cathedral which still has scaffolding up as they repair it from a terrible fire. Something that Americans hear often is that Parisians are rude. And what I found was that if you meet them halfway on the language, they are quite willing to respond. Luckily, I have studied some French by virtue of having to sing in French for my vocal performance degree. So with a little help from Google Translate, I was able to make basic conversation. But I think of Parisians like I think of New Yorkers. Most people don't really say hello or acknowledge each other on the street. They're just too consumed with their daily lives. At night, the Eiffel Tower certainly comes to life by a dazzling display of light. The view from Sequoia on the rooftop of the Kempton Hotel provides the perfect view for this. French mornings are a delight. You can pick any street cafe because they all give you a perfect view of a Parisian morning. A croissant, a coffee, and a juice, otherwise known as a petit déjeuner. That'll give you a small breakfast, but fuel for the day. Parisian cafes place their tables and chairs facing the street, almost as if they are asking you to take in the sights and sounds. But almost immediately, I noticed something that is true all throughout France. As close as your table may be to another party's, they are speaking at a much lower volume. And music, because it's not blasting, complements the ambiance rather than forces it. One thing that honestly I can't stand about restaurants or bars in America, especially in the South Florida area, is that the music is so loud that it interrupts your enjoyment. It forces people to have to shout to hear each other. In France, you can focus or not focus on music because it is well balanced. In fact, at so many French cafes, I heard classic American music. Tina Turner, Marvin Gaye, Al Green, Creedence Clearwater Revival, the kind of music that cafes should be playing because it's great music. It's not whatever the billboard charts have sold to you as the latest greatest song by Cardi B or Drake. In this way, I was surprised to hear American music in these cafes, but it was tastefully done. And the ambiance allows you to both hear those you came to dine with while also taking in the environment. And how could I come to Paris without a famous crepe? This crepe was made with Grand Marnier, giving it a certain orange zest. Other must-dos are, of course, the famous Arc de Triomphe, or Arch of the Star, commissioned by Napoleon in 1806. And it honors the fallen soldiers from the French Revolutionary and Napoleonic Wars. And of course, there is the iconic Louvre Museum, which is the world's most visited museum home to the Mona Lisa and Venus de Milo. At night, I stumbled upon the Music Academy where people were dancing the tango. It was almost like a, a game of pickup basketball for dancers. You could pick a partner and just go for it. This was an exciting bit of culture for me that I had never seen in front of a gorgeous building. From Paris, I took a high-speed train to Dijon. And when I say high-speed, I do mean high speed. 
If you take a look at this video, you will see how fast we zoomed by the landscape and other cars. However, the trains, like many areas in France, are a little light on the air conditioning. And I think, as an American, I felt hot a lot of the time. Whereas the French, they may be used to it. They were having a heat wave at the time. After all, it was August. And you just have to deal with it. Once in Dijon, of course, the birthplace of the famous Dijon mustard, I rented a car to Bone, the first city that I encountered that bears my name in some capacity. Now, Bone is right in the heart of the Burgundy wine country or as the French say, Bourgogne. I visited Chateau Clos de Vougeot, a famous vineyard discovered by Cistercian monks around the 12th century that bears the grapes that will create wine ranging from about $80 a bottle to $4,000 per bottle. This region grows quite a bit of the famous French Pinot Noir grape. And when the juice is pressed, it comes out clear. It gets the red color by coming in contact with the skin for a distinct period of time. You can make a rosé from these same Pinot grapes, or of course, a fine Pinot Noir. The vineyard is divided among a dozen or so winemakers, and there is a Confrérie Wine Society headquartered right there on site which hosts highly celebrated receptions. Their motto is, jamais en vain, toujours en vain, which means never in vain, always in wine. If you go anywhere in France, you will have a great selection of French wine from Chardonnay to Sancerre to a Grand Cru Burgundy, all for a reasonable price point. It goes well with any meal. From the charming little town of Beaune, I headed to Lyon, France's third largest city. Condé Nast magazine has written, forget about Paris, Lyon is the city you'll fall in love with. Lyon is considered the gastronomic capital of France, with a bevy of Michelin star rated restaurants. Lyon is also a city of great elevation and topography. And to get a great view of the city, I decided to get lunch at Gastronomique, a spot by chef Christian Tetedois. It is positioned at the top of Vieux Lyon, which is Old Lyon. I have to tell you about the menu because this is the pinnacle of French cuisine. I started with a tomato tartare and a zucchini flower with a thyme emulsion. Then the main dish, a signature of Emmanuel Bourgogne's lobster and veal head. It was succulent. Every flavor on the palate has been considered, and every texture. After a pre-dessert of vanilla mousse, sorbet, and blueberry, the dessert was del Toro chocolate with agastache and cocoa nibs, and a mint sorbet. Of course, all of this was paired with outstanding wine. The view or the cuisine alone would have been worth it. But paired together, it's a must if you ever are in Lyon. Lyon is a city of winding, narrow cobblestone streets where you can get lost, but in the best kind of way. Taking the funicular train to the top will allow you to see the cathedral and sip on a beverage while overlooking the city. Lyon is also a combination of modern and old, where graffiti can be seen atop some of its tallest buildings, while just next to that might be an old cathedral or palace. I started to practice my wedding song out there. Le ciel bleu, plus bien se fondre, et la terre, plus bien se coule. La, 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 la. From Lyon, I traveled south to the tiny towns of Le Bon and Rouens. Close to these towns was a forest fire, and that was a little bit vexing since France has been experiencing a number of these fires, but they seem to be able to manage and control them, despite a very arid climate. Le Bon is where the wedding was going to be, and in Rouens, I found a French street musician who was playing, yet again, some surprising songs. Take a listen. <laughs>
When he came around, I chatted with him, and I'd heard him sing something before that made me think maybe a duet would be good about the city where I'm from, Memphis, Tennessee. So we all agreed upon That's All Right Mama by Elvis Presley. Take a listen. <laughs> Let's <laughs> go. 